I asked you guys on Twitter if you'd be interested in seeing a series of videos where I cover the Virgin New Adventures, and the majority of you said yes, so um, I will see if this video goes well, and if it does, I will be doing a couple of these every now and then. So, Time Room Genesis. It's the first Virgin New Adventure. It's written by John Peel, and it sets up the Time Wirum arc. Is it any good, though? That's the question. It's hated by most fans, and I can definitely see why. But, I do have to admit, I find a lot of enjoyment in the story. I personally really do like it. The story starts off with Ace having her memories wiped just because the Doctor's been clearing out his brain because his, it's out of storage or something. It's a bit stupid, sure, but it does sort of explain plot holes and continuity errors in the show. So I suppose it's quite a quite a neat idea, really. And it does... It's, it's a good way to start off the story. Then the Doctor's reminded of this creature called the Time Worm, which is a mythology thing from ancient Gallifrey or something. Um, and we see this hologram recording from the Invasion of Time where the Fourth Doctor is like, Oh, look out, there's this Time Worm thing. Um, and then they land in ancient Mesopotamia and meet Gilgamesh, and it's all sort of revolves around the epic of Gilgamesh, and the baddie is Ishtar, a cyborg from this planet and stuff, and turns out she's actually the Time Worm. She was the time we're all along. It's it's actually really enjoyable. It does have some very good ideas. Like, one of the characters is one of the last Neanderthals, and there's a lot of really good ideas in there. And, I mean, setting it in ancient Mesopotamia is quite an interesting idea. And the sort of epic of Gilgamesh stuff is it's really a very good idea. The only problem is, and there is a big problem about all of this, Gilgamesh is the biggest wanker ever. Like, he is probably the most annoying Doctor Who character I've ever written. He only cares about one thing, and that's having sex with people. He wants to fuck everything. He is one horny bastard. And um, the way he's introduced isn't very great. He's introduced by having sex with a 13-year-old girl, which is just a bit a bit disgusting, just a wee bit, you know. It's um, Yeah, it, it sort of ruins this book, which is a shame, because there's really some great stuff in there. Ishtar is an in or the Time Room is a very interesting character, and she's sort of she's a sort of unique take on the Cyberman. I'd say she isn't got like a Cyberman, but she's a sort of she's downloaded her consciousness into this robot body. She's a sort of cyborg. It's it's an interesting idea. Um, there's really some great stuff in there, but it's just this feels like a first draft. If anything, it feels like a an early first draft with lots of errors and stuff. I don't think it's the worst book ever. I think it's a lot better than quite a few of the other books in this range, but it's, um, Gilgamesh has sex every chapter or so with someone. It's, it's, it's too much, basically, and they really shouldn't have had him have sex with a 13-year-old in the first sort of scene he's in. It's just too much, if you know what I mean. Just, just too much. Um, there's some stuff you know, towards the end of the book that sort of works as this dinner scene where he's acting inappropriately and stuff. I think they should have kept that to show, you know, the differences in the culture, but him having having sex with a little girl just isn't, isn't you know, doesn't quite work, especially because Doctor Who has never done anything like this before. I'm fine with Doctor Who having mature content, um, and this isn't as bad as things like Saigon when being you just isn't enough, but for the first no, well, no, it just, no, it's it's too much. It's I think we can all agree that it's pretty disgusting. Apart from that, though, everything about this book is pretty damn enjoyable. Um, even though there's, again, quite a lot of awkward bits where, like, stuff happens, and it just feels very underdeveloped. But it's an enjoyable read. I would give this one a 6 out of 10. It's not amazing, but it, it isn't as bad as some people say it is. There is some stuff in there. There's some good ideas, good concepts. It's just underdeveloped. Anyways... This one leads into the next one, which is Time Worm Exodus. Time Worm Genesis ended up with, up with the Doctor and Ace finding out that Ishtar was sort of the Time Worm, but they created her sort of ish, uh, and it's sort of all their fault. So they uh, chase, tried to chase her across time and end up in 1951, only to find out 
the Nazis have sort of won World War Two now all of a sudden. Um, so they go back in time to the 20s and meet young Hitler and the doctor helps him a bit. And then they travel to 1939 uh, to Nuremberg and they uh, they sort of meet Hitler again. And this time he recognizes the doctor. And he's like, hey, yeah, I remember you. You're a you're a, a nice bloke. And then um, turns out that the warlord from the war games are changing history and the time we um, has gotten stuck in Hitler's brain and is helping him have power or something now and she, she can't get out um it's all it's all this stuff has a this book has a lot of stuff going on and it has a lot of really bad ideas but overall it's a really fun book it's really enjoyable it's a sort of this isn't i mean this isn't great art by any means it's not a great piece of literature but it is very very enjoyable and it has some really great stuff with the warlords um it's, mm, I don't know, because it does have some very controversial ideas, like, the, the, it turns out that the sort of the Nazis have were sort of being helped by the warlords all along, and, you know, not a big fan of that idea, but it's a fun, enjoyable book, it's definitely an improvement uh, from Time Room Genesis, it, this is quite a bit better, this doesn't have any, you know, young girls being raped in it, so that's always, always good. This one is definitely an improvement. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Um, and of course, you know which one's next. Time Worm Apocalypse is, um, is probably the most boring Doctor Who story that I have experienced in recent memory. It's, um, it's the Macra Terror. Without the macra and with the time room instead. There we are. And that's about it. It's not as good as the macra terror. It's exactly the same plot, exactly the same things, just without the macra and it has the time room in it a bit, tiny bit. She's hardly in it. And Ace is in it instead of Ben and Polly and Jamie. And the seventh doctor's in it instead instead of the second. And the second doctor's in it as well, of course, but only in flashbacks. Um, and so is, so is Ben and Polly, but again, only in flashbacks, but, uh, but yeah, this one's, uh, this one's dull, this one's really, really dull, this one is a not very good version of the Macro Tower, not awful, just, it feels like you are reliving the Macro Tower, that's how I, the only way I can describe it, written, it's written by Nigel Robinson, who read a few other books down the, in the series, um, he, he's written some big Finnish stuff as well, uh, he wrote the, the Hunters of Earth, which is okay. Um, he wrote a lot of Target stuff as well, but yeah, this is his first original fiction thing, and it's uh, it's pretty bland, really run of the mill. It's got mm, hardly got anything. It's hardly got anything to do with the time room. I'd say, if you aren't doing a serious marathon like me, give this one a skip. You aren't missing out on anything whatsoever. Five out of ten, I suppose. And I'm being a bit generous. So, Time Wirum Revelation. Well, right. This one is interesting. It's the final conclusion to the Time Wirum saga, and it's, um, it's weird. It starts off with this bit where we see Bully from, from Ace's school time killing her, and it's this sort of alternate dimension thing. Uh, the Doctor and Ace land on the moon, but they think it's this village. There's a living church. Death appears, Ace gets stuck in the Doctor's brain, lots of weird stuff happens. This one just feels off. It, I don't think it really gets the characters quite right. Uh, and there's, there's some odd sequences inside the Doctor's brain with Ace meeting past incarnations of him. It's Overall, it's it's um, this one isn't really my cup of tea. This one's probably about a 5 out of 10. So that's it for the Time Worm books. Overall, they went great. So, after Time Worm, Virgin decided to do a trilogy of books, another sort of story arc thing, called Cat's Cradle. And uh, it started off with Cat's Cradle times Crucible, which is about the TARDIS malfunctioning, and somehow ending up as this weird place where some of the first pioneering Gallifreyan time travellers ended up. Now, that sounds awesome. Problem is... 
that's really all that happens in it. There's hardly any plot, and it's it, it this one really has pacing problems, and it's uninteresting, dull. Um, we, I mean, it's written by Mark Platt, who wrote Ghost Light, which I love personally. Uh, but this one just, no, it doesn't feel right. It introduces some really great ideas, like the idea of the looms and all that good stuff, which I love. But that's really the only good stuff in there. This one really lacks some substance. It it feels more like a first draft. I'd say, you know, this, this one's probably about a four, three or four out of ten. So, Cat's Cradle Warhead. Now, this one really doesn't have any connections to Time's Crucible other than the Silver Cat. But apart from that, this one's fucking awesome. It's the near future. Earth is, you know, polluted and everyone's dying at a young age. And th th these people at a place called the Butler Institute have found a way to uh, maybe save the rich by uploading their consciousness into a computer they can all hang out. It's a really, really, really good idea. And it has some dark, dark bits. This one is bleak. Really some great writing by Andrew Cartmel. It's, it's a shame he never wrote for TV. It really is. This one's absolutely amazing. You absolutely need to read it. It is so phenomenal. Um, especially because it's set, you know, it's set in the sort of really near future, probably around 2008-ish. It's, it's, yeah, it's in the world's polluted, it's all a mess. Ace, Ace is, takes it of, she's in this one a lot as well, but in this one it actually feels natural, and she's written very, very well by Andrew Cartmel. And the Doctor, when he's in it, he isn't in it that much, but when he is, he's really good as well, and all the supporting characters feel so real, and they have so much life in them. This one's just so, I don't know, it just feels so, realistic you can just really you can just imagine this world and it it really it's really great i wouldn't say it feels that much like doctor who but as a story this one's excellent as a sci-fi story this one is absolutely excellent i'm gonna give it an eight or a nine this one's really really good you should absolutely read this one you don't even have to read times crucible to understand this one so if if you're new to the virgin new adventures i want to get into them this one is a very, very good place to start. It really shows what they are. Um, this one's splendid, splendid, excellent book. So, Cat's Cradle, Witch Mark. This one feels a lot like Time Room Apocalypse in the way that it, it doesn't really have anything too interesting in it. It's not a bad story, but it's set in this village where supernatural things are going on and there have been unicorn sightings and stuff. And there's this portal to another world where you know, there's this supernatural fantasy world. It's an interesting idea. The story itself is really not very interesting. It's really not, not very good. But not a bad story either. It's, it has its moments. I think the main problem comes down to the fact that it, it lacks originality and the characters are horrible. This one is awful, especially compared to Warhead, because in, in Warhead, Ace was so nice, and she, you could really feel that her character had grown since um, since Ice World. In this one, it just, oh my god, she is so annoying in this one. Like, ugh. I know this one is just so bad, character-wise. It, but it does have its interesting moments, and it does have some interesting ideas, and I don't think this one's an awful story on a whole. It's a 5 out of 10. You can read it. It's sort of entertaining in places. But you can really tell this one was written by a college student. Right then, so now the Virgin New Adventures attempts at doing story arcs things is sort of over. They're still going to do story arcs, but it's going to be loose and they aren't going to, you know, all be called something. So, Nightshade by Mark Gattis. This one is so famous. This one is so popular. And... Here's a bit of a confession. I wasn't able to finish it. This has to be one of the dullest books I have ever read. I couldn't finish it. I could not finish it, no matter how much I tried. Read most of it. Couldn't get through the last couple of chapters. It's just really dull, that's all. I mean, people praise this one for having atmosphere and stuff, but I couldn't 
feel the atmosphere. It was just, it was just boring. It was just boring. The characters were just cliches. It was so cliche. It was so not what I look for in Doctor Who. This is not what I look for in Doctor Who. I, you, you can really tell that Mark Gatiss tried, and I think that's, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that Mark Gatiss tried, but he didn't do a very good job. It is his first book. I don't blame him. I can definitely sort of see why people like it, but this one really just, no, this is not what I look for in Doctor Who. This isn't my cup of tea. I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10 from what I read, which is most of it. And, um, I mean, read this one if you like. A lot of people like it, so you might. I just personally didn't. Love and War by Paul Cornell. The Doctor and Ace land on the planet Heaven and meet space archaeologist Bernie Summerfield. Yeah, that's right, it's her introduction story. But there is a strange alien presence, and Ace falls in love with Jan, who is a bloke. And uh, basically what happens is Jan dies, Ace gets really upset at the Doctor, she leaves the TARDIS for a bit, uh, she comes back in a few books' time, and then uh, the Doctor starts travelling with Bernie Summerfield. So it's the introduction story for her. Now, I really do like this book very, very much. The novel is amazing. Really a very solid book. Um, I think it can be a bit too, you know, emotional at times, but it, it, it's a very good book. It's, it's an interesting plot. It has some very good, very nice, realistic characters. I think the Doctor's characterization is very good. I do like the companion of Bernie Summerfield a lot. A lot. She is one of my favorite companions. Um, so I do. I do like this book. I have also listened to the Big Finish audio version of this. I prefer the book by quite a bit. The audio is pretty okay, but I'd say the book is much better. It goes much more in depth. The audio is a bit. It does the horrible thing of of you know does the horrible thing of tweaking Ace and Jan's relationship a, a bit. So it's not as it's not as serious, which I think is a horrible, horrible mistake in the audio. Because I think the, the book did that very well. Um, and the audio does feel very rushed. But the audio is okay. I just think the book is much better. So if, if you're going to experience this story, definitely go for the book. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I will do another one of these if you guys like this one. So, I might see you again for another one of these videos. I don't know. Tell me if you want me to do more, or if you don't. And if, if, if the majority of you seem to enjoy this, then I'll, I'll be doing some more. Anyways, that's it for me, and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Bye, everyone.